All right. And it looks like we are live. Hello, hello, everybody. Today is Thursday, August the 4th. And I want to welcome you all back to the Daily Digital. My name is Junior, and I'm here just to keep you all well informed of what's going on in our digital world. All right. And the first thing off the block here is that Meta is in hot water, I think, once again with the FTC. Uh, we have something that is going to seem a little bit strange at first, but you'll see why I am sharing it here with you. Uh, and it basically revolves around food, protein, such as meat and vegetables and stuff like that. The next thing is about how Miami, uh, the city of Miami, is embracing NFTs. And then the last thing is something that um, Time Magazine has actually been doing in the NFT space for quite some time. Uh, that I don't feel like a lot of people know about just yet. So just wanted to go ahead and share that as well. So without further ado, we're just going to go ahead and take a quick break and then we'll jump right into it. Okay, and we are back. Um, so the first thing off the block here is the FTC seeks to block virtual reality giant Meta's acquisition of popular app creator within. Uh, for a long time when I was reading this article, I thought they were trying to say uh, within as in meta trying to hire within the company or something like that. Uh, but no, within is actually a um, app developer or I guess I should say uh, just a developer of games and stuff like that. Virtual reality games uh, and meta is trying to acquire them. Meta is trying to purchase them. And the reason being is because they want to kind of get into the fitness space. Um, there's a fitness app out there in the virtual reality space called Supernatural that within, uh, I, don't, I think it's called within something, um, within Unlimited, within Unlimited created this uh, fitness app called Supernatural and Meta is now, instead of going out and trying to create their own fitness app, which I believe Meta already created a fitness app, um, but instead of going out there and you know, creating one that is up to par uh, with what, you know, people would like, they are actually just trying to just go ahead and buy a company. And the reason why the FTC is trying to stop this is because, well, in here it mentions a few things, which is actually all pretty true. Meta has really positioned themselves as the leader in a lot of ways. Um, they... I'm trying to see if I can find it here real quick. It kind of just broke down all of the all of the different things that Meta is um, involved in. So yeah, I think this is it. Uh, the complaint alleges that under the leadership of Zuckerberg, the company began its campaign to conquer virtual reality with the acquisition of headset manufacturer Oculus VR, uh, fueled by the popularity of its top selling Quest headsets. Meta's Quest Store has become a leading US app platform within uh, with more than 400 apps um, available for download. So Meta has actually bought like almost 10, I think they said like seven or eight different development companies already. Uh, they have the Oculus, you know, um, brand name now. They have all of the headsets that they provide as well. They have the world leading platform as well. So they have actually positioned themselves in a really, really good space in, when it comes to the virtual reality world. Um, and now what they're trying to do is purchase within Unlimited so that they can also have the Supernatural app as well. Uh, again, it says it's a popular app in the dedicated fitness virtual reality app market. Supernatural offers a variety of high quality workouts set to music, including tracks from A-list artists, uh, Katy Perry, Imagine Dragons, Lady Gaga, and Coldplay, and virtually located in uh, striking photorealistic locales like the Galapagos Islands. Um, so you can you can check out that app as well. I've never actually used on my headset the Supernatural app. I didn't even know it existed, but uh, I'm I'm more into you know fitness in real life. I would say. Um, okay, yeah. So this is one thing I want to read here. So the complaint alleges that Meta is a potential entrant in the virtual reality dedicated fitness app market with the required resources and a reasonable probability 
of building its own virtual reality app to compete in the space. So basically Meta, you're rich enough, <laughs> you're famous enough, you can just create your own virtual reality app. But instead of entering into the space, it is choosing to buy Supernatural. Meta's independent entry would increase consumer choice. So this is, you know, in my opinion, a good thing. Increase consumer choice, increase innovation, spur additional competition and to attract the best employees and also yield other competitive benefits. But since Meta wants to acquire within, on the other hand, it would eliminate the prospect of such entry, dampening future innovation and competitive rivalry. Um, furthermore, the mere possibility of Meta's entry has likely influenced competition in the virtual reality dedicated fitness app market. If Meta is allowed to buy within the company, uh, or sorry, the, if Meta is allowed to buy within, that competitive pressure will slacken the lessening of competition violates the antitrust laws uh, according to the complaint. So that's what they're violating here, uh, which is why it's illegal. They're violating antitrust laws. Um, the complaint also alleges that when viewed against the broader backdrop of the market for all virtual reality fitness apps, Meta's proposed acquisition of within is also illegal. Meta already participates in this broader market with its Beat Saber app, as does within with its premium rival app, Supernatural. The two companies act currently spur each other to keep adding uh, new features and attract more users, competitive rivalry that would be lost if the acquisition were uh, allowed to proceed. Um, so yeah, so as you can see here, if you guys just have to imagine this. Uh, take for example, Walmart. Walmart's not really a grocery store, but let's just say for the grocery store aspect of things, uh, they went out and pretty much bought every single grocery store that's out there. Uh, then there would be no more other grocery stores that you could get to choose from. Um, like Walmart versus Target. If Walmart was allowed to buy Target, that would be almost catastrophe in my opinion because there's a lot of Target lovers out there um, that you know hate Walmart for specific reasons and a lot of Walmart lovers out there that hate Target for whatever reason. Um, so with Facebook slash Meta going out and just basically buying all these different development um, companies and stuff like that, they now reduce the market size of how you know how many different choices that we have as the people. Uh, everything would have to go straight through Facebook. Everything would have to go straight through Meta, and where would be where would we be after that? Uh, same thing happened with I'm not sure if a lot of people know uh, Sprint and T-Mobile actually um, merged together. Uh, there was a big lawsuit about that about you know how those two major cell phone companies were not allowed to um, but I guess everything happened and they actually did was able to merge uh, so now you really just have T-Mobile and like Verizon in the US as far as like the major cell phone pr um, providers out there um, and also I think uh, Spirit Airlines and Frontier if I'm not mistaken I have to do a little bit of research on that I do know Spirit Airlines but I can't remember what other company uh, but those two companies are trying to merge and it's like alright you guys can't really merge uh, because you know what else would be left in that case so um, I don't know I don't, I don't know how far this will go as far as like the lawsuit and everything the FT again I was articles from FTC.gov so that was an actual FTC website and it's you know they're saying they're hey we don't want this to happen but hey we'll, we'll actually see what happens all right and so the next thing that I have here is a company called Alpha, F oh, actually the company is called DeepMind. And DeepMind created something called AlphaFold, which is a protein structure database. Um, and this is actually pretty wild because the way they were able to do this was by having like 500,000, I think it was like 500,000 different scientists and stuff like that actually go out there and use this AlphaFold technology which is a artificial intelligent technology um, to try and figure out what is the structure of some of these different proteins so AlphaFold DB provides open source or open access to over 200 million protein structures prediction to accelerate scientific research uh, AlphaFold is an AI system development developed by DeepMind that predicts a protein's 3D structure from its amino acid sequence it regularly achieves accuracy uh, competitive with experiment. 
uh, and it kind of goes on a little bit more here. Uh, this is the actual AlphaFold kind of like website on DeepMind website. It had a little bit more. July 28th, this actually came out. Um, and I'm assuming this is an image of what they look like. I've never really thought about what protein looks like. Again, when I think of protein, I'm thinking, you know, Chipotle and <laughs> they ask you, they ask you what kind of protein you want. Uh, I myself don't really eat meat, so I'm, I'm just like, all right, none in that case. But, you know, um, they mention, uh, yeah, here we go. So they mention a number of different species, uh, animals, plants, bacteria, fungi, and other. Um, all 200 plus million structures will also be available for bulk download uh, via Google Cloud public data set. So I'm really curious what these different proteins actually look like in 3D. I myself would like to see that. Um, yeah, so more than 500,000 researchers from 190 countries have accessed the AlphaFold database to view over 2 million structures. Our freely available structures have also been integrated into other public data sets such as Ensemble, Uniprot, and Open Targets. Um, I think this is a kind of what some of them look like. I mean, this is just looks like ribbons. It's it's I mean, it's kind of weird to see. Um, I would like to actually like because I think you can go to AlphaFold and actually. Yeah, so you can search search for protein, gene, uniprot, but I don't even know what to write. I guess I give example examples. So fat. All right, so I want to look. I want to see what E. coli looks like. So I'm gonna click on E. coli, see what pops up. Oh, so they got multiple different. Okay, let's pick a good one. Let's pick a uh, coli surface antigen. Uh, I don't know. Let's pick uh let's pick this one. E. coli top A DNA to poison morass to morass I or maybe one. Let's see. Let's click on that. And okay, I see a 3D viewer here. Let's see. Okay, so yeah, so this is actually what protein looks like. Um Wow, it looks like arrows and ribbons and strings and and I'm I'm really interested because it's like why couldn't we learn this before using microscopes and and all the other scientific stuff that we have? Why did it take for and again this is uh, an artificially intelligent you know process that occurred where multiple different scientists uploaded I guess information into this you know database about a year ago and then a year later this uh, alpha fold actually came up with all of these different structures like what they actually look like in 3d um, well I guess if you look through a Microsoft it's not really in 3d so that's interesting um, so yeah so let me know let me know what you guys think again that's um I guess it's not really something digital uh, but since it is artificial intelligence, it fits right in with this show. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, it's pretty interesting to, to to see what, I guess, again, it's protein, so we eat it, right? So it's just like, what do they look like at a microscopic level? Um, yeah. So then on the next bit here, we have Miami. Uh, Miami is, in my opinion, the mecca for cryptocurrency and stuff like that they actually came out with their own miami coin a few months back and currently now here they are now trying to collab with a couple of companies to sell 5,000 nfts it looks like so miami collabs with time which is a time magazine mastercard which is the credit card you know provider and salesforce um I can describe Salesforce. I believe they do stuff for like jobs and stuff. So Miami City's four-way partnership to mint NFTs on Ethereum will see money flow to local artists and talent. So essentially, uh, something I didn't know, Miami is made up of like 56 square miles. I think it is. Um, 
56 square miles of area and they are hiring 56 local artists in each mile of Miami in order to create 5,000 NFTs. Um, yeah, so it announced a Web3 initiative backed by Time Magazine and Salesforce. Miami aims to create a collection of 5,000 NFTs designed by 56 local artists. The number of 56 represents the 56 square miles of area. NFT, older, NFT holders will be able to access MasterCard's Prices Miami program, which organizes unique culinary experiences and private events around the city. So if you hold one of the NFT guys, you basically will be able to access different events, access different restaurants, so on and so forth. Um, cloud provider Salesforce will handle the minting and selling via their newly unveiled NFT cloud product. Um, launched in June and currently in closed pilot, the NFT cloud is designed to aid in corporate clients in creating, managing, and trading them. So uh, Salesforce is basically bringing NFTs to the corporate world. This is going to be something definitely big to look out for. Uh, the initiative is anticipated to launch in December with tokens deployed to the Ethereum blockchain following up the upcoming merge, which will sh shift the network away from the proof of work over to the proof of stake. Uh, if you don't know what those are, I would say definitely look into those ASAP if you're getting into cryptocurrency. Um, but I'm going to have to do a show on the differences between that two as well. That might be like a word of the week kind of thing. Um, um, I don't think there's really much else. This, this is really just uh, came out. Let's see if they have a date on here. Uh, July 29th, really just like last week. Uh, there's not much information just yet. Basically, if you're in the Miami area and you're an artist, Miami <laughs> is looking for you uh, just because, you know, they are trying to build out this thing that you know is creating these nfts for the city and then um do something with them doesn't really share what they plan to do uh, i'm trying to kind of read here there's all the articles that i kind of looked into they didn't have much information um but down here you can kind of see miami can learn from times nft success uh which is what our next story is going to be about time magazine who actually came out with their own NFT magazine, essentially. So back in last year, uh, September 2021, first of all, we need to discuss what timepieces are. Timepieces is a NFT collection community in which basically, it's, it's kind of like if you had the, um, the Time Magazine subscription. So every month or whatever, whenever a new Time Magazine would come out, then you would actually get that magazine and stuff like that. Now they've just basically added in a secondary portion of it where time pieces is like the NFT magazine portion kind of thing, um, but building out the whole community around it. And then essentially they just basically airdrop you every time they new, um, uh, every airdrop to their subscribers every time a new issue comes out. So, um, this actually came out in September 2021. So this was, I mean, close to a year ago. Wow, guys, it's, it's already August. Um, so, yeah, so close to about a year ago in September 2021, Time Peaches, Time Pieces features work from 40 artists, which can, uh, which have collaborated with the publication to produce this community NFT collection. The collection went live on September 23rd in a blind drop consisting of 4,676 pieces, which are now up for sale on the NFT marketplace OpenSea. Each one started at 0.1 ETH, which is around $300 at that time at least. Uh, but they are already generating much more on the secondary market. Um, so yeah, so that is time pieces. And it's not really much to share there without really going over here to look at it. So I'm gonna click on this one. Oh, so this was issue number one. I forgot I clicked on this. So this was issue number one. Of course, it had to be about who they call the Prince of Crypto, which is Vitalik Buterin, um, founder of, creator of Ethereum. And the first issue, NF, the first NFT issue features Time Magazine's um, cover story on Ethereum co-founder Vitalik Buterin. 
The magazine will live on the blockchain, but is hosted through a decentralized protocol allowing holders to read the magazine pretty much anytime they want in its entirety through an interactive NFT. Inside the issue, you will find important news coverage and stories as well as a special bonus cover from world-renowned timepieces Slices of Time artist JR. The issue was created in partnership with the LitDAO. Timepieces airdrop the NFT issue to select timepiece and lit community wallet holders which was made possible uh, with the support of Circle Transient Labs served uh, as the project's technical partner. Um, so again, they came out with a bunch of different collections. This collection is something, something, I guess. Uh, the NFT issue, I guess. Uh, let me go back to, uh, I think I have to like, let me see. All right, yeah, so here we go. So this is the, I guess, Time Pieces website, I think. And they have, again, different collections. They have the Beat Club collection. Um, yeah, all Time Piece holders are eligible to register. We got pre-sale for minting. Um, about Time Pieces. Yeah, I think uh, so. This this website here is nft.time.com. Uh, let me go to time.com forward slash timepieces. And okay, yeah, here we go. So yeah, timepieces is an NFT community initiative, inclusive of four collections to date: the Genesis, the Inspiration, the Long Necky Woman of the Year, the Slices of Time, and the newly announced Beat Club Collection. Uh, so the Beat Club Collection was the one we just kind of took a peek at. Um, but as you can see here, uh, Time Pieces is a Web3 community initiative from Time. Um, the Genesis, okay, there it is. The Genesis collection was the first one, which launched in September. And uh, uh, it included works from over 40 incredible global artists spanning multiple disciplines. Um, time Pieces represents an important first step in Time's Web3 community strategy, enabling us to bring together artists collectors and fans in a collaborative manner with a, the goal of building utility and community value over the long term so yeah so here i guess is a couple of what they have in store um, there's that vitalik uh issue there time and i guess they've been doing very very well actually in in all of this um, again, I haven't really followed this too much, but I'm actually going to start because, uh, I mean, Time Magazine is really, oh man, the V Club collection has sold out and the holder contest is closed. Dang. Uh, Time Magazine is actually a really big company. I'm pretty sure you've heard of them at some point in time of your life. This wave into the Web3 world is not, um, uncommon. That's definitely for these big companies. They are trying to find ways to keep engaging with their different users and stuff like that, especially with the younger generation. So I'm uh, I'm actually going to try and keep up with uh, what Time is actually doing because I didn't know they were actually that big into it until um, literally a couple of days ago. Uh, there's a lot you can find when you do some research on the web versus uh, other stuff. There's a lot you can do on the web, so... With that being said, that is the last thing I have for you guys today. I appreciate your time. Again, description of everything is in the description. Description of everything with the links <laughs> is provided in the description of this video below. All you have to do is click on them, read more up on them, or I mean, you guys can just Google them as well. Um, also, you guys can tap in with me on all my different, different social media channels. Uh, I have all of the handles in the description as well. Um, and if nothing else, you guys have a wonderful rest of your Thursday.